and welcome back to the Music City Classic here for the ladies 301 double in double out finals man it's been a lot of great work here we're gonna have to talk to the players about where to step or <laughs> as they're uh, as they're walking back just to make sure they utilize the right side, walk towards the score. Here is Jen, I'm gonna say Kochi, taking on, why did that go there? Tracy Fryer Tag, Fire Tag, sorry. And if I butcher a name, please, please tell me how to pronounce it. I hate messing that up. Tracy played in the event earlier uh, and actually had the highest average of the event, even though she lost in the semifinals. So definitely a power scorer, which I can only imagine in 301 is a huge advantage. All right, two twenties will leave tops here for Jen. Jen, one dart left. Oh, just a single. Was not going to be able to see that with that angle. But very well done. 11 for 32. 32 for Tracy. Is in there? No. Double 10 for the first leg on the board here for Jen. Need to attack this dart. Oh. Some double trouble nerves here early on, sorry. There goes the double eight though for Tracy, 1-0 score line. And it is first to two legs. So Tracy one leg away. And they will diddle every leg of this. And leave the darts in the dartboard, too, for the diddle. So is this one going to be a measure? That's a good question. I'm not sure, Sean. trying not to touch anything. It's like putting a cell phone in the air. You just got to find that right spot and then... Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. Let's just hold it there the rest of the time. Don't touch it. Don't even, don't, don't even look at don't, it. Don't even look at it. Yeah, it's about time. We're due for a couple new headsets, it looks like, so... Man, I can tell you right now, double in, double out for me, not going to be my game. Nah. That would not be my game. I yeah. was 0 for, I think, 25 on doubles <laughs> uh, last week when I played on the Siege. Uh... Hey, Which but is you, about my average. You won one. Doubles. We did win. Thankfully, I had a partner. If it would have been me singles, that would have been miserable. Well, I see you guys are doing the partner thing now, so people can blame it on each other instead of uh, themselves. I see how you do that one. Well, honestly, we, we don't get a whole lot of doubles, steel tip, formatted events, even at the top level. Um, and I like doubles. I like the partnership. And especially partnerships that are random, where you've never even met the person before showing up that night well, i think that's um you know a reason why jen's favorite question and to some people that participate in like the world cup like she asked Erwin price and simon and a, a couple others do you prefer singles or, or pairs play and you know it's kind of interesting to hear well i'm sure most of them would prefer singles yeah that's what they play yeah but i know that the event itself being playing for someone else it it means a, a little yeah. bit Playing for More. your country means a lot. A 136 goes here, and she's the champion. Leaves 1-2-1 one, one now, so cannot go out, but can set herself up nicely. I think Tracy's out of that upper northeast, I think, Boston area, if I remember correctly. And I tried to uh, Facebook stalk Jen. Could not find the right one, I don't think. <laughs> but I'm going to guess she's from the east coast. 
She's got that very upright yep. angle to her arm. Would love to find the double ten, or yeah, the double ten here. Leaves five. That is the opposite of ideal with 20 left to hit that 15. Yeah, she should have five remaining. They're going back, back that up, back that score up. All right. If you hit the trip twenty here, do you go straight at the nineteens? Um, yeah, especially with your opponent where he is, you want two good looks. I mean, granted, it's a tough Ooh, 36 number. Thirty-six for the title. Oh, oh. Tracy has a very interesting throw. I was just about to say that little kind of step two afterwards. Yeah. That Brian Langley uh, fathead there. It is gorgeous, isn't it? My my wife actually, when thinking about like what he looked like, um, she said it looked like a, a shorter Raymond Van Barneveld. Ah, a little bit. That's with Brian. a good way of saying that, honestly. <laughs> All right, one to one as Jen took out that uh, five easily. Went one double two like it was nothing. And they're both in the 25. This is an important diddle. Very also, much so. How impressive is it? Like, if I was shooting this right now, I'd be uh, closer to the triple than the double, probably. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like that one. So it does look like uh, Jen's going to get the look to start. Clear measurements, I think, is how they do that is not PDC format which I had to like rethink about think about a long day of darts Jason Brandon's over there playing on one of those boards already going back at it again already an $800 winner on the weekend yeah. so he paid for about a minute of air conditioning in this place <laughs> <laughs> that bill's got to be outrageous let me tell you So far, no, neither in in this last leg decider. The one there thing I love about is. Steel Tip is single elimination, so there's no double dip, nothing that we have to think about with like all of that, all of those formats. This is honestly comical. That at the <laughs> what we're having to deal with back here. Um, double sixteen gets in. That's a huge dart. Jen going to try and run with 259 left. Cannot leave a finish now. But only 40, 41 scores is going to open up the door here for Tracy. And she almost has like, the Jim Furyk of darts dart throw. I can kind of see what you're saying there. He does a little bubble with his like, swing, kind of goes yep. outside in. She does kind of the opposite. Oh but there's a clear loop. I think only you and I would know know that reference right there. <laughs> well, you know what that says to me is that there's a lot of people that are sad <laughs> in this world that don't know Jim Furyk's golf swing like the back of their hand. Get on your golf game, guys. Jen's from New York. Yeah, I knew it was that northeastern part. Would be New York or Boston. Oh, for, for Jen. Uh, sorry. Yeah, I thought you meant Tracy. I think Tracy's from that same area. But New York for Jen. There's a couple of New Yorkers here then. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. You got uh, Mark Lacombe asking, how do people throw darts wearing a jacket? Mark, when you're inside the igloo, <laughs> it's almost, almost a necessity. I am always I always bring a jacket with me no matter where I, I go for commentary just because I'm not playing. I'm, I'm in the back kind of sitting. But, yeah, I think definitely a, a jacket's needed this weekend for sure at times during the matches. Well, let's put it this way. I don't blame Tracy. Like, that's, <laughs> that's no. how... That's how cold it is, because I'll tell you if I, if I think it's silly to to be wearing a jacket and sleeves and stuff. 76 scored there. Put yourself on a pretty good look at a finish. Jen going to try and put some pressure now on that 74. Might look 19 here. Just kind of even it out. 99 left. Yep. Leaves 80. But Tracy will get a look at 74 first. 
20 will leave tops. Tops for the match and the title. The women's singles 301 Music City champion is not happening yet. Jen in her mind is, so you're saying there's a chance. <laughs> 80 left. Takes a little bit of deep breath. Oh, the worst possible start that you could probably have on this. 79 remaining. Now 60. Cannot go out. So all she can do is leave it handy if she were to return. But Tracy's going to get three looks at double 10 for the title. And she gets it on dart number one, and that will do it. Congratulations. Whatever <laughs> I just tried to say there. Con my tongue just didn't move anymore. Congratulations, Tracy Firetag. Oh, that was good. Champion of the 301 double in, double out women's event today. Well done to her. Great stuff indeed. Yep, that's going to do it for our uh, pro event for the women. For Sean's uh, tongue. Yeah, that too, as we get ready to start the blind draw here. And I think we got the men's 301 happening right now. So hang tight. We'll have some more matches coming your way as we just begin our coverage here of the Music City Classic. Thanks for joining us. William Stewart alongside me, Mr. Sean Green. Get ready for some fun this weekend, folks. Oh, it's going to be a great time. Great time, so get ready for it. Yeah. Whatever you just said. I'm excited. Let me I tell am you. Too. I'm I excited. really am. It's going to be a great weekend here, so thanks for joining us. Hit that notification bell so you get notified whenever we go live. We'll hear a quick word from our sponsors, and we'll be right back. So in preparation for a recent event, I put this board to the test with four to six hours of practice per week for a month straight. This gave me an opportunity to see how this board holds up as well as give you all that honest opinion you've been waiting for. After just a few throws, I was able to tell that this board was a touch softer than popular brands I've used in the past. Admittedly, this had me a little scared thinking this would lead to a fairly quick wear down. Instead, after a week, I was still at the point where I felt the board did not need to be rotated. Overall, after a month and around 20 hours of play, I was thoroughly surprised by how well this board held up. Yes, there was some aesthetic wear and tear, but I do feel there was a decrease in the amount of bounce that I had, which I directly contributed to the board softness. For me, this is a winner for both new and experienced players who like to put their hours in. Alrighty folks, don't forget we're your partner in darts. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, don't hesitate to reach out. Thanks for watching. So you want to get into darts, but you're not sure how. We can definitely help with that. We're a to zdartscom and we've been a dart specialty store for over 30 years. We have the greatest variety of darts in the country. But don't worry, we can narrow down that selection for you. Whether you're a complete beginner or a full-on expert, we developed our own colonial brand to offer an inexpensive line of darts, dartboards, and accessories. So you can get into the game without breaking the bank. Join our amazing community by going to azdarts.com. So in preparation for a recent event, I put this board to the test.
Right, it looks like we got our next match. It just got called to the stage as we're going to keep it coming for you guys. As it <laughs> looks like Brian Langley, uh, both the face and Brian Langley are going to be coming up here next. So uh, <laughs> hang tight. We'll have this on board at number one here in just a moment's time. Thanks for joining us, folks. Test, test, one, two, three, one, two, three.
All right, welcome back. We are live in Nashville, Tennessee, the Music City Classic. I'm Sean Green, play-by-play -play commentator, joined by Will Stewart of USA Darts Production. This is a USA Darts Production, and we are happy to be here at the Igloo. That is <laughs> Sinesta Nashville <laughs> Airport, to the I point where Larry Butler, Larry Legend's walking around trying to find the thermostat to turn it up a little bit. <laughs> Did he really? He's like, he's like, I know last year's was a little hot, but... It's maybe 60 in here. And then the crazy thing, buddy, is you go into the men's bathroom, and it's 10 degrees cooler in there. Somehow or another, I tell you what. They got the AC cranking here. It's, I didn't even realize these guys were underway. I thought they were still yet to diddle, and all of a sudden I looked down at my DC, and I'm like, oh. Yeah, yeah they did a quick diddle, that's oh, for sure. Okay. But, yeah, so let's just – I'm going to try and describe this to everyone who's at home who's not experiencing the chill that is in here. Okay, um, have you ever gone to a hotel room and you get there kind of late at night and realize that they didn't turn on the air for you, so it's 73 degrees, and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm just going to put it on 60 and sleep close to the air conditioner and go to bed with the covers off. Like, that's how warm it is for me. Okay, so try doing that, but that feeling uh, only the entire day <laughs> of waking up at like 4 a.m. to put the covers on because you realize, oh, it's 60 degrees in here. Um, it's that feeling. It's that wake up at 4 a.m. feeling when you can't feel your legs anymore. I'm pretty sure uh, I can't feel my arms right now, legs. I think uh, numerous people are going outside for a quick little heat up break yeah. before they come back and play their next match. So the winner of this match this is uh, Kevin Fuquay from Chattanooga, Chattanooga, Tennessee, taking on Brian Langley of Knoxville, Tennessee. So a couple Tennessee natives here coming over to Nashville. Of course, Brian was in uh, Rock Hill, South Carolina last week, or last week, yesterday. Seems yeah. like last week, doesn't it? Honestly, we're seeing numerous people. I mean, Rick Kinsey, who doesn't even really throw steel tip, yep. uh, is here with Tyler. Um, I've seen Gates in the building. Kevin I think Luke Dustin Holt's here. on his way. Kevin Luke's here. Joe Chaney, Elliot yep. Milk. Numerous Alex, others. Alex Bellman will be here tomorrow, the champion of the ESPN Bullshooter Invitational. It's nice to see those guys electing. Eh, I'll just make the six-hour drive to, ten, to Nashville, Tennessee for the Music City yeah, I love Classic. It. Kevin has an interesting throw. It kind of almost flicks it towards the dartboard, like grips and flicks. Yeah, that is a little crazy, isn't it? It's different. It's just a different style. So he's not really throwing the dart as much as he's flicking it out of his hands. A little bit like uh, Stephen Bunting. Definitely relies on his, his release more than anything else. And kind of a flip release. And the winner of this will take on Elliot Milk, who just took out Danny Lobby Jr. What was that score line there? Four to one Woo! final score line. Elliot Milk averaging 88 for the match, but that last leg he averaged 60 <laughs> in, the, in the win. He was averaging 107 after three legs, I believe. That is just nasty from Elliot Milk, who honestly I had to give him a pat on the back and say, unlucky man, unlucky man yeah. for his ESPN uh, shot or invitational there. And uh, another match I'm keeping my eye on here, Leonard Gates down 3-1 to one to 16-year-old P.J. Stewart. That doesn't surprise me. That doesn't surprise me at all because, honestly, here's the thing. Like I said earlier, Joey Lanon and all those youth players, they just have no fear when it comes to this game. Which is both really, really makes me hate them. And also, uh, it's that's a pretty awesome... Uh, quality to have in this. Brian sitting on 58. A little two-dart combination to tie it up one-to-one. -one. It is first of four here in this Open Pro Singles event tonight. So race to four. Best of seven. Brian has scored 15, leaving 
33 left. No. He hit 26. So I leave 32. Twenty left leaves tops, but Brian will get the first look here at this 32 to tie up the score line, one to one. Race to four. Just inside. Brian was very impressive yesterday in, in Rock Hill. He really was. He took me by surprise. I was like, it was Brian Langley, and then all of a sudden I see him on the board. Oh, I know that guy. I just yeah. haven't recognized his name or whatever. And then sure enough, he took me by surprise, playing really well there. He's kind of a, the way I describe him, his look, he's a Tennessee Raymond Van Barneveld. <laughs> yeah, that is a good way to say yeah, it. Yeah, right I mean, there, same yeah. facial structure pretty much. A little bit shorter. And just a little bit more American. And eyeball in the 19s. Well, he made a mess out of that. Only 17 scored total. B.J. Stewart has three cleared darts at 40 to beat Leonard Gates. Four to one. And he does beat Leonard Gates 4-1. to one. So Leonard Gates is out of this pro singles by 16-year-old P.J. Stewart. Wow. Didn't see that one coming. There we go. I love you because you just said, I can see that. It doesn't surprise me at all. <laughs> and then you're like, yeah, I didn't see that one coming at all. Crazy. Hey, that's, me just, that's me worried about a board cam instead of I know. Uh, <laughs> paying attention to what we're saying. Uh, no, I mean, that's the thing is, I did say earlier, I said the the kid has zero fear and like all your numerous others, like Caden Anderson's another one that I watched um, him take on Leonard Gates in at ADA. And that was another thing, like all those kids, is, it doesn't matter who they play, they're confident in themselves. Right. And they're confident in their stroke and they're going to say, as long as I play my game on this board, then we're good. Yeah, actually, let's point out the fact P.J. Stewart's playing in this event instead of the Evolution Tour event. Yeah. That, that yeah. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah. Joey Lenal also playing in this event instead of the Evolution Tour event, I, it looks like. So, huh. I think they know that there's a tough task ahead for a couple others to uh, best them, but yeah. I honestly think that Caden Anderson may be up there on the ranking list for that. If, if someone can do it, it's it's going to be Caden. Yep. They're actually playing in a separate room. I was like, I wonder where this other part is. There's actually, I that, believe, that sucks a little bit. Ten, to, 10 plus boards in the other room. Kevin here on, an, on a 48 finish to take a 2-1 lead. Brian's going to put a lot of pressure on it, though. 15 will leave tops. Does hit a 15. Scores that one three five to leave forty. Double sixteen. Double eight. Oh, he hits the double sixteen there. One dart too late, and Brian's gonna get a look to break the throw and take a two one lead. And he does. Just lays it right on that bottom wire of the double twenty. You mentioned Vetter, there he is right there. Yep. He's always in the front row. Surprised he's not trying to take my job with his <laughs> live streaming capabilities. As you can see, they had to s switch out uh, markers there. That's like the second time in this match, I believe, they, they changed out markers. Just tagging them in and out. Again, there's three different events going on concurrently to each other. Um so I'm sure people are volunteering while they're not playing, and then when they're getting called to a board, they have to stop volunteering. 
great. One, three, six. For Kevin Fuquay. So I'll give you a guess which one of these guys is an iron worker. Oh. I'm guessing Kevin. Yeah. I'm guessing Kevin. Yep, he is. Uh, Brian, I believe, is a realtor. Okay. Sales agent at Remax. So there you go. Okay, all righty, all righty. And again, this is just from their... Uh, from you creeping on Facebook. Yep. So <laughs> yep. if so, you better update all of your uh, stuff about yourself if you don't want me to say the wrong thing. That would be your fault, not mine. I hope somebody suckers you in with a good funny one. <laughs> that would be actually a really good practical joke be to play. Classic. If you're listening and you're playing in the CSC Challenger series, please don't do that, because I will say what's written on the teleprompter. <laughs> I will Ron Burgundy that to death. I'm Ron Burgundy. Brian, all the way back on 279 with his throw. So he's giving Kevin a chance to break right back. Kevin a chance at an 11 darter, though. Well, sets it up nicely because Brian only got seven in the last round. Yeah, that's all he really needed to do was just leave double tops, come back with at least three darts at it, if not six here. If Brian can't convert. Again, we are live here at music at the Music City Classic, the 33rd annual Music City Classic in Nashville, Tennessee. Actually drove past the Grand Ole Opera uh, yeah. last night. Nice to see that. Grand Ole well. Opry. Yeah, sorry. Um, last night on my way into town at around 2.30 in the morning. Back in the early 90s, my father-in-law actually had the opportunity to play at the Grand Ole Opry twice. I saw that. So, uh, yeah, they'll be uh, playing this weekend, actually, for a little reunion concert. So, shout out to Slate Creek Band, playing in Wichita, Kansas. Look at That's that. a nice one, 171. To put a lot of pressure on this 20. Leaves 20 of his own. Double 10. And Kevin questioning his doubles right now, and what a time to put in a 1-7-1 to pressure it. Brian's going to try and take advantage of it to hold his throw, but take a 3-1 score line and a race to four. This is a huge, huge swing of momentum if he can get this to go. Oh, you drive for show, you putt for dough, and he did not make that three-footer. <laughs> I should have said eight-footer since it's... Seven feet nine and three inches. Ooh, electing to uh, split here. Six. And it's a six double two split. That's an interesting move. It did not pay off for him, Cotton, since it is ESPN the Ocho today. <laughs> and there is the double ten from Brian Langley. Takes uh, a three one lead. I'll be 100% honest. I didn't like it. I didn't like it at all from Kevin. Uh, either split it two, double four. Or go right at it. And I think in that situation, you got to go at it. And your reasoning for that is, is ooh. ooh he right. really didn't like it. He slammed it down. <laughs> he slammed it down indeed. Is a Do a switch he unintentionally. Burn that mother down. There's Brian Lingley in the back. Yep. The ooh. fathead version <laughs> of it, which is hilarious. 140 there to start off this leg. He's going to try and end it now. Kevin has scored very well, just unfortunately not able to hit his outs. He had a chance in a, an 11 darter in the last leg and just botched the doubles. Often a storyline story in steel tip. Doubles. These guys are all talented enough to score, but are they all practicing their doubles, their outs, their ways to go about it? Chris White, sorry, brother, I just now see your... Your comment, what's up? It says, boom goes the dynamite, one of the kings of the castle, Sean Green. Jeremy Howell tuning in with us. 
uh, co-host of the It's Your Shot podcast, and my partner in crime in Canada, Weekend 2. Does that with John Part. It's a great podcast if you haven't heard it. Yeah, ditto on that one. I wonder if I wonder if the chat knows when you don't pay attention to me when I'm speaking. <laughs> By the way, you respond to me <laughs> <laughs> what I say. I was totally paying attention uh, on that one. You were talking about Jeremy's podcast. It's, yeah, it's hilarious because usually you, when you're like dialed into listening to me, you respond with a little bit more enthusiasm. And then, yeah, whatever he just <laughs> said, I agree with. <laughs> uh, for those that do not know, there is a lot of stuff we're keeping an eye on back here, whether it be. All the switches, the eyes that we got to keep our eyes on for the switches. Dark Connect, audio, and Sean's out here calling me out. Of course. <laughs> That's how I have fun. What do you mean? Brian missed the big number on the first start, did not leave himself a finish after dart number one. That is not ideal. All right. 72 remaining. Double-double. He went for the double-double, which I appreciate the fact that he looked at it. And Brian Langley sitting on 74. Trip 14 will leave double 16. I don't know what he's talking about with his scorer. There's the trip, trip 14, 32 left. We'll get one look at it. <laughs> he hit the trip to leave double two. Oh. And unfortunately, finds himself in the madhouse. So Brian Langley, three darts at 16 to win the match and move on in this tournament to face Elliot Milk. What a great winning prize. To have to go up against Elliot Milk. <laughs> Double four. <laughs> Double two. Oh, no. They're both in the madhouse. And here we go. Kevin licks his fingers and said, you're saying there's a chance. <laughs> And, and he hits it on dart one. Good shot there. That's one of those types of legs, types of misses from Brian that might get in his head for the next leg, even though he has the start. That's one of those legs that can really affect your, your mental game for a while. Yeah, I can, I can see that being the case. 59 scored. So, again, the opening's open. That's why they call it an opening. <laughs> <laughs> Good switch up there. Grabbing a hole of that triple to score 98. Brian does find dart two in the trip 20. How about that? A big 135. The best 135 you can hit. You can start off with a triple five. And Kevin has switched down to the 19s to start off with. Worked out the first round. That one hits another big trip, but now falling just a touch behind Brian. Ninety-seven scored. Clean it up nicely. And again, you're seeing Kevin starting on the 19s. Well, he did that was deja vu there. 78 or 77 scored again. See what Brian does from 210. Great cover shot. 81 scored. Kevin, all he can do is put pressure on the 129. That's not going to be enough pressure as Brian knows he has six starts from 129 now. Starting on the 19s. Work your way up. No real 
need to go at it if he did hit that triple there. Oh, that was an interesting last start. Hey, yeah, that is interesting. Is he's gonna leave double fifteen? Hmm. Ruro. If I'm Kevin, I feel really good about my opponent doing that. Yeah, I do. I would too. Unfortunately, he will get a look at it here. So let's see if he can capitalize. Does he go right at it? Oh, he does, he does, and he hits it. I don't feel good about it now. <laughs> hits the double fifteen dart number one. As and that'll win it four to two. As we see the Langley gang in the back jumping up <laughs> and down, giving them some love. I wonder who they're rooting for. Oh, definitely not Brian. <laughs> definitely not Brian. I love that. <laughs> That's great. I'm getting one made of you. That's for sure. Oh, Juan Vetter, a legend, sitting down there in the front row. Yeah, good stuff indeed. As we'll go ahead and give him, give him what he wants here. Let's let's do this. Hold on. Will's gonna try and figure out a zoom feature. Look at this. <laughs> Let's see if he looks up and sees it. He's taking a picture of something. The man, the myth, the legend. Magic man. The magic man. We need to have him do some magic yeah. tricks right there is what we need to do. He probably, You know he has his stuff on him. Oh, let me let me just go ahead and see. Hold he on. He has a fake ear in his pocket, I guarantee it. Oh, there's <laughs> maybe, possibly. Let's see if he'll give us one. Yeah, there you go. Juan Vetter, the magic man himself. As I will send you around here on the matches, give you some updates of what is going on. All right. PJ Stewart playing against Jeff Ball here. This is the top 16. Gavin Nickel, another young gun. Sitting there, Swans. Z pulls right out. He says, "I need yep, something." There's, there's his balls. balls. Here we go. I was gonna say, you know, he has his balls in his pocket, but that would come off inappropriate. But he does have them. We're gonna see exactly how he does these tricks. Isn't that great? <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> One better at his best. I bet he. I bet she has two balls in her hand. Oh. What? <laughs> what? You guys better be looking closely. <laughs> he made her go get the ball, too. He said, hey, go get that for me. All right, here we go. Oh, oh. two and turns into three. <laughs> here, just put your hand out. I'll show you how it's done here. <laughs> what just happened? I don't even know what just happened there. Does she have four balls? <laughs> if she does, I'm going crazy. If she has four oh, balls, it's that? a big ball. <laughs> <laughs> We're watching magic, Anthony. <laughs> the magic man himself. <laughs> that was great. Classic Juan Vetter, everybody. Way, way better Enjoy. than anything you guys could have expected at any point in time from the stream. <laughs> so obviously we'll be right back after this uh, short little break. Magic man himself.
All righty, guys. We just did a great interview with Mr. Jason Brandon, so we'll be happy to add that into our production here for the weekend. We're going to get another match here on the stream and head up this way for some more entertainment. Hang tight. We'll be right back.
right, folks, back here, ready for another one. Joe After versus Jim Widmeyer. Top 16 match, correct? It is a top 16 match. Uh, that is Joe right there, sponsored by Galaxy. Uh, Captain America is Jim Widmeyer. Jim's one of those people that you can, uh, you can Google search, and his name comes up. That's how, uh, how impressive Jim Widmeyer is. Uh, and how legendary he is as a player. Um, he is a retired New York City Department of Sanitation worker. That's a tough gig, I guarantee you. He now resides in Parrish, Florida. Uh, much deserved uh, vacation, I'm gonna, I'm gonna guess. Uh, residence. Joe, I'm gonna be honest, Joe's a very secretive person on Facebook. Tough to get a lot of information on him. Even if you're friends of his, it uh, doesn't tell you where he's from. Uh, but he, he comes off a little bit like he's from the New York area, East Coast. Uh, and we're probably way wrong. <laughs> but yeah, I'm not sure about that one. I thought he was from the more south region myself, but then again, could be mistaken. Yeah, he just screams, I'm from New York. <laughs> you know? Anyone who knows that, let us know. Uh, so far, looking at the stats here in this event, Larry Butler leading the three-dart average uh, with an 83.36. Um, the tournament so far has been turned on its heels. And look at this from Jim Widmeyer starting off with a 180. Boom goes the dynamite. Well, that's what was funny. I went up there and said, how's it going, Jim? He said, well, I put up the scoreboard. First, first start was a 180, so it might as well... Uh <laughs> Might as well keep it going, right? I say, yeah, sounds good, buddy. Go ahead and continue, and look what he's doing right now. And Joe Efter is a player. His throw is one I would not recommend doing. Uh, it's it's not super pretty as a throw, but he can really score. Uh, unfortunately, Joe is not available for the player briefing, so he might walk in front of that camera every time. Oh, but you should always walk the way of the scorer, and that should be the right, but that's okay. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Shouldn't have to right. have this conversation with him. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, I actually think the PDC does it specifically for cameras. Like, that's a rule for them because of the cameras. They're usually pretty quick to tell them, hey, other way, please, as well. There's a nice 140 there for Joe. I don't know if anyone's scoring for them up there either. I've seen a lot of uh, no chalkers in the on the boards, which I find very weird. I I wish every tournament, every event did a uh, if you lost on that board, you're you're chalking the next one for every event. Yeah, that it just I mean, seems that like would the be perfect nice. way to do things. Although the problem is, is that you have people who just really don't care uh, for whatever repercussions they'll get on that, so that it's never going to work. It'd be chaos. Yeah, some people just elect to say, yeah, no, I'm good, thanks. <laughs> but hit that like button, hit that share button for us, guys. Uh, let everyone know we are back here live. Pump up those viewers. Jim Widmeyer, Captain America, is on stream right now against Joe Efter. They're averaging in the high tons. It's obviously the first leg, but they're throwing <laughs> very well in this first leg, I'm telling you. As Jim leaves himself on 40 after 12. And Joe now pressured into this 139. First of four legs here in the Open Pro Singles event. Music City Classic. 33rd annual Music City Classic. In the Igloo, Nashville, Tennessee, at the Sinesta Nashville Airport where it is no warmer than 60 degrees inside this building. <laughs> and maybe colder. I'm almost glad I brought my sweats. Somebody be throwing them on here. Oh, sweatpants is going to be my go-to tomorrow. <laughs> I don't care if I'm in public. John's wearing his uh, sweatpants. They might not even fit properly. Guess what? Put them on anyway. They probably won't go with the jersey I'm going to wear. Don't care. Wearing it. We're going to see double top look here from Jimmy Wid. And he gets it. Dart one. Throws a 13 darter to hold his throw. 
and Joe was sitting there on 23 after 12. So look at those averages after the first leg. Those might come down. Eh, maybe. <laughs> you never know. Averaging 119 and 115, guys. Take a picture of this. Well, that's your name is Josh Rock. Yeah. Who uh, has been on a tear lately for the PDC. Yeah, he's been, I mean, absolutely brilliant. And the craziest thing is that Barry Hearn called it about six months ago on an interview with uh, Dawson. Insanity that he would do that. So give me a, give me a name of a of a player who's up and coming that's going to be something special. And he said Josh Rock. This is before he was even playing pro tour events uh, at the level that he is. Joe only getting 59. They're slowing down early here in this one. Jim, never mind. Couple trip twenties. Captain America 139. These guys, <laughs> I mean, this is this is top level darts coming at you right now. Both these guys, CDC card holders. I've said that a lot tonight. Yeah, you really have, honestly. <laughs> You've said it a couple times. It is nice to have that gig to know these guys uh, more so than I would. i got to be honest with you, I have not spoken to Jim or Joe a whole bunch. Jim almost intimidates me. Just almost? He's he's a no nonsense guy. Like uh, you can tell. Fun, but no nonsense. That's that. I'm a nonsense guy. New York <laughs> mentality right there, buddy. I bring the nonsense. So I feel like that's just a clash already. But he might he's gonna try and go fishing, leaving one seventy. I'm hoping for a one forty for Joe just because it forces him to shoot at it. But if you're gonna put the boat in the water and leave one seventy, why not just why not just Put the bait in the water. See if you catch that big fish. You know? Give her a chuck in there. You never know. I mean, you can't catch what you don't throw out there. That's There's the it. first one. Oh, man. I really thought it was going to go for it if that, was the, if that was the case. That's innovation at its finest right there, isn't it, Sean? What? Look at that. Uh-huh. Got it, kind of. Got it working, kind of. How's it sound? Eh, <laughs> decent. All decent. Right. We're going to go with decent. Oh, decent. Ruh row. <laughs> that is embarrassing. Someone that walks was in. very <laughs> embarrassing. As <laughs> we have an employee who's been in and out that just walked into the, the rut row. back area here. <sighs> so. Playing in this event. Uh, JT Davis, who's a pretty unknown player from Ohio, younger kid, as Jim takes a 2 nothing lead. Uh, his first nine average is a 103.52 right now. Ooh. Four 180s, seven 140 pluses. I mean, he's, you can tell inconsistent on the big scores, but if he gets that hashed out, he's going to be pretty much untouchable. I guess he lost the first. Um, he is out of the tournament already, though. So maybe next time. Wonder who he lost to. That I'm not sure. It's too big of a bracket for me to check it out. Never mind. It was Danny Lobby. 4-3. Last oh. leg decided. Oh, wow. So. And then Lobby, unfortunately, succumbed to... Uh, Elliot Milk, Milk, the book man. Yeah, he was actually playing Brian Langley, who we had just on the uh, stream he, just a little bit ago. He beat him, so now he's up to Gavin Nickel, playing that twenty-year-old. And Gavin's been playing well. If you look at it, he, he actually went through uh, Cheney. Yeah, with his last match. No, David Lowe in his last match, and then Joseph Cheney. Oh, ah, okay. He's actually only lost three legs total, and his route has been Joey Mann. Nick Jordson, he beat 4-0. Ooh. Uh, Joe Chaney, he beat 4-1. And, yeah, I am talking about ESPN athlete Joe Chaney. 
This is this is the thing. And Dave Lowe for one who just beat Joey Lenoff four three. Sestefano told me I would say a good month and a month or two ago that him and Gavin were doing some practice together and he was like, Gavin's coming along. I'd watch out and sure enough, I don't think he was lying. I think Gavin's come a, come a far away as he ups the game here after uh an, an unfortunate passing from yeah. his father, so he's He's taken the legacy of his dad, and he's uh, he's just made it even better. Uh, how about this? Also in the top eight, Larry Butler is taking on Trevor Bubbles, who bowls right now. Um, Larry just beat Jeff Springer, our runner-up in the CDC match play. Beat him four to one. Trevor just beat Danny Morales 4-1. Oh, Excuse sorry. Dunk. My bad. <laughs> Pardon me. Joe Hedrick, Jason Brandon. Jason Brandon, our match play champion, still in this thing. It, you know, that's the thing. Once he's got one on his belt, it's almost like Jason just goes for a couple more on the weekend. I yep. saw it at Cherry Bomb. I wonder if we're going to see it again here. You can always follow along with all of this, guys, on Dark Connect. Just click on events and click on Music City Classic. I'm going to keep an eye on the Gavin Nickel. Good question here. Yeah. Edwin uh, Phoenix just put this on his Facebook. Darters, if you had a choice at a tournament, what award would you get? Trophy, medal, plaque, ring, or belt? Belt. That that belt seems that like sounds that sounds fresh. That sounds like that so sound, good. That sounds like no one does it, right? Yep. That was the coolest thing at the Western New York shootout that I went to um, in Batavia, New York, from Knox Amusements. Uh, they did belt buckles. Wow. On like belt buckles a, hang, as medals, so it's hanging a, as a medal like you can put it around your neck, but it's a belt buckle. Oh, and it man. was like a unique belt buckle that had engravings of like what event it was and the place that you finished. It was so cool, dude. That is dirty. Right? And actually, yep. those were made by or uh, designed by Jen Mounts. Oh, belt buckles. okay. But I, I, I'm telling you right now, those need to be brought back more often. I like that. I really do. 94 left. There's the trip 18, so tops here for Joe to steal this leg. Oh, he gave it a good look. He's not going to be happy about it, but he's he not gave gonna, it a look. He's not happy because Jim Wittenmeyer is going to come up here just needing double 10. Yep, and to take a 3-0 lead, averaging 107.36 for the match. Average is going to drop here in just a second, though. Especially if he doesn't hit it, but I'm, I'm expecting him to on dart three. Nope. You jinxing him, Sean. Elliot Milk, the milkman, up 2 nothing on Gavin Nickel so far. Double 10 for the win of the leg and the break of throw. He gets it. Captain America un uncharacteristically missing the doubles there. Opening up the door for Joe, and Joe takes advantage. Now a chance to make this even. It was very close to being a 3-0 scoreline. Now 2-1, to one and this whole thing's changed on its head. There's a second dart in the trip 20 for Joe. We never got an answer where Joe's from, did we? I don't think we did. I'm telling you, he's, he's from nowhere. Nowhere. Great darts there for Jim, a 137. Good opening.
There's some queens starting to play out there. In the, I was just in about to room. say, I think I'm hearing a little bit here. I like it because it's definitely low enough to where you guys won't hear it, but it's loud enough for us to. Yeah, I'll definitely say they've given us a spot where we're not, we don't really have to worry about the the music. Just freezing to death. That's one thing we'll have Hypothermia to just. Hypothermia is a weird one that we have to worry about. We can start a little fire back. We could. Oh. <laughs> we actually could open up the back door. Jim, not too happy with that one. Looks right at the camera and goes, what was that? <laughs> it was a 59, Jim. A typical number Been there, for done a lot that, of and feeling good about it. A typical number for a lot of us. Because <laughs> I switched and still hit the single number of what I switched to, so that's a win for me. Joe. Definitely released that second dart a little bit too early. After that first dart, he's not going to feel good about 82 scored. He'll take it, but he doesn't feel good about it. Speaking of not feeling good about it, Gavin Nickel and Elliot Milker are in double trouble right now. This is a big leg if Gavin can break it. Jim, two great perfect darts to start off with. Needs to switch to the 18 on dart three, though, as he got lucky on the first two. There you go, Jim. Smart there, smart. Gavin Woo. Nickel picks that one up. If he would have stayed on that 20, I would have been like, Jim, <laughs> what is you doing? Leaves 167. I've gone full hood, bud. Yep. <laughs> the hood is up. I can confirm that for the uh, audience that is listening to us. Slash watching along the players. So we Needing the almost big fish. One six seven here. Now he's just looking to try to grab that a was treble Bill's to fault do some completely. damage. Yeah, that <laughs> was four, only thirty nine scored there. Yeah, that's a that's a stumble. That's a stumble, an un, uncharacteristic stumble there for Jim. And opens up the door here. Joe might think he has six starts from this point on the one five three. He would love to end it here. Especially now, he hopes he has six starts at it. Checking out our chat. And Woo! Woo! Got a little loud there. Up. He only gets 26. He thought, I, instead of putting pressure on, I'm just going to have some breakfast. So there, even again, Jim's going to feel himself in a fortunate position. But Joe will have the look at the 127 to tie this up. Joe takes a little breath here. He's going to start on the 20s. Single 20, so now trip 19. Would have left the bowl. Misses it. Walks away wondering how he could possibly miss that very tiny segment. <laughs> and now he's going to try and hit a trip 18 to leave 32. Ideally. And he does leave the 32. So the think and the walk helped him out in the long run here. But we'll see. Jim Widmeyer needing 72 for a 3-1 match. This is where you can go trip 16 to leave double 12. That's a common route. The trip 12 would leave double 18. He did go the trip 12 route, so 20 will leave tops. And he's going to like the... The way his darts lay, he loves that 20, double 20 move because he can just stack it right on top of the other. However, Joe's going to get a look here at the 32. Takes a deep breath. Trying to tie this bad boy up. Double eight. And he gets it. Jim almost resigned to know that that was probably going to happen, seeing it by the look on his face. The average has dropped significantly since he had a 107 after two legs. But he will get the start. Still has the advantage in the match. Gavin Nickel down 3-1 to one to Elliot Milk. Elliot sitting on 1-2-1 one, one after 9. 
Gavin just at a ton 40 and still back to 263. So Milk has at least six from 1-2-1 one, one to win the match. Joe trying to take advantage of just tying up the score line. Big last dart. Just I, so subtly, here's some board calls in the background. Which I got to say, I absolutely love that he is really digging into the Tennessee accent. When he's, uh, that's when he's Ray. Talking. That's Ray Sessler. I like it. He's got a thick one as well. Let me tell you what. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully you guys didn't hear that. I tried not to say it. <laughs> Couldn't help myself. Uh, if you guys also said it, then we're friends. <laughs> but uh, if you didn't hear that, that's probably for the best. <laughs> Larry Butler just oh, defeats geez. Trevor Boobles 4-1. to one. So we only lost four legs total in this uh, tournament so far. Moves on to the semifinals. <laughs> Any comments about it? Say, is Joe using Lauby darts here? Is that what that looks like to you? It is. Yeah. Those are the target lobbies. That's what I thought. Todd goes, we all thought it. Good. <laughs> Glad it's we're all on the same page. Scott lets us know we missed yep. a 180 because well, of that comment. <laughs> of whose comment? Yours? Exactly. <laughs> you shouldn't have said what you said. That was your fault. Well, I'm sorry. Okay. Elliot Milk and Larry Butler are our first two semifinalists here in the Open Pro Singles. Both those names, not a shock. Will it be Joe or Jim who will also make it there? That's to the semis? Yeah, to the semis. So this is the round of eight? Yeah. I thought we was round of 16. Woo. Let me confirm. Nope, this is a round of 16 match. It is round of 16? I'm a liar. Ah. That's what I am. Uh, Kevin Hawkins is playing against uh, Colm Nielsen. Um, Kevin up 3-2 in that match. That's a top 16 match as well. I did figure we might be playing just a hair of catch-up. But those those are quarterfinal matchups. Yeah, though, that are yeah that's what I was thinking. We're probably playing just a hair of catch-up because of uh, Jason Jason Brandon's oh, yes. uh, final. Touche. Yeah. Although he's not playing right now. So I don't think it's him. We did get a. He actually has already defeated Joe Hedrick four to one, so he is in the uh, quarterfinals, waiting for the winner of this one. Oh. So this one's oh, actually okay. behind Jason. I have an opinion on that, but I'm not going to say anything about. Why that might be the case. <laughs> Jim with 32 left to take the lead 3-2. to two, Gets it. That is textbook 86 yeah. and two darts. Anytime you can hit one of those two dart checkouts that's 70 or above, man, it feels good just to click clack that one and, and move also on to the next. One leg away now for Jim. Yeah, I forget this is a best of seven on this one. Yep, first to four. And it is not a win by two. That was just the CDC match play earlier. Joe, an unfortunate 60. Uh, Jeremy House and Kevin Hawkins, a great dude. Uh, Kevin Hawkins, one of the Canadians that is that is here. What are the handful? Is mm -hmm. A bunch of youth from the Evolution and Junior Tour are here this weekend. Nice to see Brandon Hall and uh, – or Braden Hall. Sorry, yep. <laughs> Brandon. Braden Hall um, – Jason Fer uh, Fernan, uh, Connor Watt, yep. uh, Ethan Marshall. Uh, I have not seen Trey yet. Let me go see Trey. Hmm. And then, of course, Trish Gresick is here as well. Uh, who cares about her? 
<laughs> just kidding. <laughs> well, I work with her next week, too, so uh, me. Uh, this is back-to-back -back weekends for me and Trish. I dealt with her at the ADA last weekend. There you go. Which is kind of crazy. So I'm considering she's Canadian. <laughs> imagine, imagine being in this spot. You're Larry Butler. You have dominated right now uh, running through 4-1 uh, victory over Joe Beecroft, which is a tough opponent. 4-1 over J.D. Falk, tough opponent. 4-1 over Chris Mahegu, uh, great opponent. 4-1 over Jeff Springer. And then 4-1 now over Trevor Bubbles. You've won every match 4-1 in the five matches you've played. And now you have to sit there and wait <laughs> for this match and the, to end. And then Jason Brandon against the winner of this one before you play again. Just enough time to get a little cold, maybe. Yeah, you were mentioning that. So I'm going to say this is probably going to – the bottom half of the bracket is probably going to favor <laughs> – Whoever comes out of Jason Brandon and Joe or Jim. Todd Martin saying, Trish has great hair. Don't mock her. I'm Canadian, too. And bald. <laughs> <laughs> Todd, you gave us way too much information there. And also uh, a weird compliment to Trish. But I will pass it along to her <laughs> next time I see her. <laughs> oh, I love it. I wonder if Todd's the same person who commented on uh, Peter Cetera's uh, picture of all of us in Canada at dinner with the comments, uh, I would give my left arm to have dinner with Trish Gressick. <laughs> 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 so, all right, well, that's a creepy compliment, so <laughs> let's, uh, <laughs> let's not talk about that one anymore. That's classic. Nice 140 there from Joe. Gonna pull him all the way down to 46 left. 117 checkout needed from Jim Widmeyer to lock this one in as a W. 3-3 three, three score line for Kevin Hawkins and uh, Colm Nielsen, too. 57 with the first dart. I didn't see that one coming. I thought he would go 20 for sure. So that's gonna leave 60. 20 for tops, and he likes the stack. That's actually a good marker for him. Got unlucky that it did not ride up the barrel. You know, I saw something good on stacker darts from Daryl Gurney. Did you see this one as well? Mm-hmm. How to he grips sure. the dart. So he goes from a back hold to a front hold to throw a stacker instead of a yep. Danny Lobby angle. So and what's funny is Danny throws his dart right here that you're looking at. That's not in. That's low, isn't it? That is in. Is it in? That is in. All right. Yep, you can see the the hole there, 3-3. Three, three. Just riding on that bottom wire. But uh, Danny throws his dart from the very back of his barrel. When I grip a dart, I, I throw from the very front. Actually, my um, middle finger uh, is on the front of the tip of the dart. So my dart, or my throw, tends to, for that dart, the Danny Lobby dart, to throw very flat. But because he throws from the very back of his dart, it pitches up at quite an actual angle. Look at that. Big right in that, the heart on that, that double. That is how you diddle right there. Joe will get the start. Jim actually threw a great blocker dart, too, and Joe just got right past it. Yeah, he did, and he's going to have the advantage with the throw in this one. And he is feeling pretty good there. Steady ton to start off. Yeah, looking for that dart that's going to be the capitalizer on Jim Widmeyer. Look at these averages, 81 and an 88. Those are really tasty averages, honestly. Yeah, and again, Jim was over 100 after a couple legs. So, um, yeah, very, very, very um, class averages between these two gentlemen especially in the igloo here in nashville tennessee <laughs> oh which you know is the perfect name for this building it, it really is right about now it is 
What do you mean right about now? How about right about when you walked in? <laughs> oh, my gosh, guys. ESPN champion athlete Alex Bellman in the background. Whoa. He is in the building. Hey, congrats to you, sir. Congrats to you. That's Back nice there, that he's in there. Talking his war stories. You can see him in the blue jersey there. Yeah, talking to another ESPN athlete, Kevin Liu. Yeah. About how much he won and how much uh, Kevin didn't. I'm going to be honest, though. We were talking about it. We're going to have to ask Alex about this pulling back for an interview and just simply ask him, there's a little shakiness up there, huh? What do you think? Yeah, I actually got some insider information from Rick Henze about that, actually. Um, when Alex, when he shakes like that, he's actually comfortable. Um, it, his, wow. He's relaxed. He says when uh, that's just a, it's a weird thing that he has noticed happens to him when he's feeling good. Well, when he, he was playing. He wasn't miss, missing much. No. So I it, would say he was playing pretty good. Which is why it seems so weird that he was looked like he was shaking every time and then would stop shaking a split hair before he drew back the dart. But, but yeah, so I'd actually still like to ask, ask him about it himself. But Rick. Rick said that was one of the first questions he asked him because he could notice it from the crowd live there. Wow. And that's one thing to notice it from the crowd. And he, he also mentioned to me, he said, you know, DJ and Gordon did great. That, that also ESPN guy did great. But there yeah. was a couple points where he almost yelled it out. And they're, they weren't too far right. away. They could possibly hear that. There's a guy walking around with a bucket on his head right there. <laughs> That actually was happening in the background. For those of you who uh, want to know if it is turnt up here in Nashville. What a gritty final leg we're seeing <laughs> right here. This is gritty. Fans are going insane watching this. <laughs> oh, what a dart. Beautiful. Beautiful. Hits is that 130? 130. To leave one two five. Could have asked for a much better setup. Jim needs a couple couple trips to put some pressure on this one two five. Yeah, he's not gonna feel happy without two of the uh, two of these triples here. And he is blocked on the twenties after the first start with the way his darts lay. Super flat. Did he collect? I think he did on yeah, that I triple. I think he did leave himself a finish. Yes, he did. Tough finish, but it is a doable finish. If I'm Joe and I know Jim Widmeyer as a player, I think this 125 has to go. Oh, certainly. I'm certainly. expecting Jim to hit the 149. Start on the 25 or the bull. There's the 25, so trip 20 for tops. Oh, does not get it. He's not going to be happy with that second dart. He pulled that. Quite a bit offline. And tried to hit the trip 15. So Jim Widmeyer's going to get a look here at the 149 for the match. Joe just hoping to come back with the 70. An unlucky first dart means that Joe will come back in the 70. And Jim, unfortunately, unable to do much, leaves 106. Not enough pressure here to really affect Joe. So trip 10 or trip 18? It looks like the 18 is the chosen route. 52 left. Options here on what he wants to do. He's going to leave tops. One dart at it for the match. Uh, and he threw it too high. Got a little... Too much, too much juice for that one. Yeah. And Captain America Ooh. will get a dart at it, most likely. Six, ten. Yep. He chooses 36, the ten. Yep, so double 18. Oh, and he bends the wire. Did you see that thing move? You could. And, and look, look at Joe. Look at him. Look at Joe. As he knew that. Joe's how did that not go in? Before he goes up there for the winning darts. <laughs> he couldn't even look. He wow. can't even look. 
bent the wire in. That tells you how much respect Joe has for Jim. Once that first start won the trip 20, he thought it was already over. Oh, he certainly did. There's no doubt about it. I'd be standing behind him knowing it was over. Kevin Hawkins defeats Colm Nielsen 4-3 to three in the last leg decider. That's a great marker for Joe. Now he needs double 10. Oh, and the pressure, I think, kind of got to him at the very last moment. And Jim Widmeyer is going to get three darts at 36. And you got to think this is going in yeah. here. Joe put his darts in his pocket, and he thinks this is over. Took off his glasses. But Jim is kind of awkward here with the 18s with the way his darts lay. And he wires it twice, bends the wire twice. Those oh can't those my. can't be closer. Wh look at those holes. I don't even think Joe Wow. Can, I don't even think Joe can believe it right now. Well, Joe had his glasses off, he had his darts in his pocket, and now they're back out in his hand. And he's looking at double five and now he's gonna make work of it. Double two, one dart. And yep, yeah, just not not going for him and the way Jim's just wiring this double eighteen, he's Surely he's not going to give him no, any more looks at this. I, I would put $100 on the fact that he hits this. There it is. Bottom corner pocket, but gets it done. A 4-3 to three victory for Jim Widmeyer. Joe's not going to be happy with himself at all. Let's take a quick little re -quick replay, why don't we? As he puts it right in the corner of the bed and says, finally, about time here. Yeah, I bet... I bet that dart felt the worst out of the all the attempts at 18s that he just had. You would have to think so. Well, hang on to your seats, folks. We'll be right back with more action here from the Music City Classic, the 33rd annual Music City Classic. Don't go nowhere. We'll be right back. <laughs> So in preparation for a recent event, I put this board to the test with four to six hours of practice per week for a month straight. This gave me an opportunity to see how this board holds up as well as give you all that honest opinion you've been waiting for. After just a few throws, I was able to tell that this board was a touch softer than popular brands I've used in the past. Admittedly, this had me a little scared thinking this would lead to a fairly quick wear down. Instead, after a week, I was still at the point where I felt the board did not need to be rotated. Overall, after a month and around 20 hours of play, I was thoroughly surprised by how well this board held up. Yes, there was some aesthetic wear and tear, but I do feel there was a decrease in the amount of bounce that I had, which I directly contributed to the board softness. For me, this is a winner for both new and experienced players who like to put their hours in. Alrighty folks, don't forget we're your partner in darts. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, don't hesitate to reach out. Thanks for watching. So you want to get into darts, but you're not sure how. We can definitely help with that. We're A2ZDarts.com, and we've been a dart specialty store for over 30 years. We have the greatest variety of darts in the country. But don't worry, we can narrow down that selection for you. Whether you're a complete beginner or a full-on expert, we developed our own colonial brand to offer an inexpensive line of darts, dartboards, and accessories. So you can get into the game without breaking the bank. Join our amazing community by going to AZDarts.com.
All right, I just went up to the front, and it looks like we're going to have the next match to the stage. As we are looking to conclude our... It looks like we might be getting into the semifinals on that one. They did call Jim Widmeyer uh, to an opposite board. Um, Would have loved to snag that one up here, but it happened pretty quick, and him and Jason are already underway. So um, We will have a match coming to you shortly. So we're going to go ahead and see... I'm going to see if I can work Mr. Sean's computer. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> so it looks like Kevin Hawkins, Jeff Ball. The winner will face Elliot Milk in this first semis. He came out of uh, Gavin Nickel. And then Larry Butler came out on Trevor Boobolts. And he'll be awaiting Jim Widmeyer, Jason Brandon winner. So um, hang tight on that one. And we'll be having the semifinals coming your way here next, folks. Looking forward to it.
Alrighty, folks, for those that are inquiring, it's going to be Jeff Ball versus Elliot Milk here on our uh, stage board as Elliot makes his way on over now. And uh, on the other match, it'll be uh, Jim Widmeyer taking on Larry Butler in our other semifinal. So they're going to be called the three, and Elliot and Jeff are going to be called to board one, our streaming board. So we'll be getting going here in just a moment's time. There's Elliot Milk. He's a tall guy. He's very tall. Uh, like, much taller than you would expect him to be. Have you ever watched a match between him and Gary Anderson? No. That's one that you go back and watch just because... Honestly, I mean, he kind of towered over Gary there for a little. Bit. I was like, "Dang, I didn't think really good eyes he was that tall." And uh, he really, it was Elliot. Honestly, he was Elliot things in that match. He, he should have. I'll say it. I think he could have won that. I'm sure he probably would be upset. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I actually talked to him about it. He's like, "Really, when you're in that moment, it's just cool." He's like, "I actually wanted Gary Anderson the whole time." I said, "I, I want Gary," and then sure enough. Yep. All righty, folks. Well, hang tight. We'll be ready with this one in just a moment. Santa's in the background. All right, we'll be right back. <laughs> All right, everybody, welcome back. I don't know if music is playing or not. Yeah, music is playing, so I'll be right back. All right, guys, welcome back to the Pro Singles 501 tournament semifinals here between Jeff Ball and Elliot Milk here at the Music City Classic in Nashville, Tennessee. Yeah, honestly, uh, looking forward to the semifinal match is Jeff. I'm Sean Green. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> she looks at me and goes, uh, all right, Will. <laughs> Joined by the magnificently interrupting William Stewart of USA Darts. Uh, thank you for employing me this weekend, buddy. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, well, Sean, we're going to have to ask you to go home. It's cool. No. Am I still getting paid? Am I still getting paid? <laughs> this should be a good match here. It's Jeff Ball versus Elliot Milk. 
Elliot, of course, one of the participants in the ESPN uh, Top 32. And Jeff making his way from London here as he's actually with Mind the Gap, which is... Uh... No, listen. He, he's... He, this is what he's doing. He's from England, and he wants everyone to know he's from England. <laughs> so he wore a football kit to play darts in. That could be it. Like could you do. It. If you're English and you want everyone to know that you're English. Um, he also does reside in Nashville now, which is why this is a very uh, easy tournament for him to uh, get to. I'm going to guess he does not travel very much uh, to other big tournaments because this is my first time seeing him, and I've heard a lot of great things. Yeah, part of that Mind the Gap crew. That Look at that. That's a Phil Taylor oh, exact replica is. throw. <laughs> it definitely that, is. Is that Phil Taylor in a different, like... Even, Name? Even pulls it back, Phil Taylor-esque. Phil Taylor lost some weight and uh, <laughs> and got younger. Everything else about that throw is Taylor-esque. Look at that. The way he grips it, the way he sets the dart, that is that is Phil Taylor's throw. That's Phil Taylor's Just throw. Just a little bit elongated uh, follow-through, and yeah, you'd be spot on, I think. Hit hit that hit that freaking chair button, and you guys need to ask everyone: Is that Phil Taylor's throw or not? <laughs> like hands down, that is Phil Taylor's throw. Dalton says Jeff's kind of got a Phil Taylor style throw. I just noticed that. Dalton, I did not steal that from you. I promise. Yeah, you did. Don't lie. You you stole it. Oh my gosh! This is, if he followed through more, he kind of flicks it at the end. If he followed he through more, it would same, be exact Phil Taylor. Same lip movement, mm -hmm. everything, and that same up, like subtle. Open mouth. And Elliot Milk with a 180. Boom goes the dynamite. Is it just me or is Elliot Milk way taller than his name suggests? <laughs> he does go Be by. Be honest. <laughs> he is. He is. You know what his day trade job is? No. He's a warden. <laughs> that makes perfect sense. <laughs> That's where that, that look comes from. That would scare me half to death. I'm telling you right now. I think him and Willie Bruyere are from the same area okay. up there in South Dakota. I think he uh, is the warden, and Willie was the uh, Willie was the uh, sheriff or something like that. Okay. So, little side note for you. And Scott Hannish is just Scott Hannish. How about that? He's from up there too. Oh, <laughs> uh, they they claim him as they claim him. Oh my goodness! I don't think they really want to, but they do. Well, Elliot Milk has a fantastic throw. Really compact. Follows through nicely. Uh, he's going to be nice and relaxed and loose. Um, but yeah, he's six foot six at least. He oh, might yeah. be six seven. Um, been on been on the scene for some a, a long time too. Was a former Monster Barrels player. Yep. Had a couple darts made back after in the him. day. Yep. Yep. The uh, one percenters. Those I love those little darts. I was I was a huge fan of Monster Barrels. I like the Ogre Fours was oh. my go to dart. Peacemakers. Chuck Pankhouse uh, all I, day long. Which by the day by the way, did, have have you seen him this weekend? He's been here this yeah. weekend. Chuck's in, in the building, which is great to see. He actually unfortunately got beat, I think, four oh to Elliot. Um, but it's Elliot's nice been to doing see him in the mix. Yeah. Yep. Actually, funny story, I had a couple sets, an original Peacemaker set and a Peacemaker 2, and actually Ray Sessler bought those off of me. And I was like, yeah, I got I got a set. What do you need it for? Well, Chuck doesn't have any more, and he's liking the other one. I said, okay, say less. Here you go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, a break a throw right away for Elliot Milk. Takes a 1-0 lead. And uh, let's run through Jeff's road to this point. He beat Kevin Hawkins in the quarterfinals 4-0. Uh, Kevin had a good run, but falls to Jeff 4-0. Uh, Jeff beat P.J. Stewart um, in the top 16 after P.J. had just beat Leonard Gates. Uh, Stephen Phillips, another big victory. Uh, Michael Peter Jr. Um, did not play him. Donnie Lasley and then Jonathan Kraft. So Michael Peter Jr. and Steve DeVito, um, I noticed they're both in attendance. They were actually doubles partners at uh, Cherry Bomb. Took a second place finish there to Gates and Lauby. Of course, Gates and Lauby team up. What are, what are you going to do with that one? But, right. yeah, P Michael Peter Jr. is a good shot. Well, and then speaking of great shots, Elliott's road to this point has got to have been the toughest. Gavin Nickel uh, in the quarterfinal 
uh, Brian Langley in the top 16, Danny Lobby Jr. in the top 32, Kevin Luke <laughs> in the top 64, and Chuck Pankow. There he is. Chuck. There's not a that's not a bad name on that list of of his road to this point. Exactly. On the other board, to give you an update, uh, Jim Widmeyer up two to one on Larry Butler. Jim has broken Larry's throw once already. That is the other semifinal. So who will be in the finals here of the pro singles 501? Elliot Milk or Jeff Ball? Jim Widmeyer or Larry Butler? I can tell you that there's one that just is not like the others in those names. Jeff Ball is relatively unknown compared to the other three players in this semifinals. I mean, Obviously has a great shot to be in this position. When you look at the sheer, um, you know, we know these individuals. Elliot Milk, we've seen his name numerous times. Larry Butler, 94 match play champion. And then Jim Widmeyer's had so much success on the lakeside stage. Right. I mean, yeah. Jeff would be considered your uh, oddball out. But name recognition is not important here. It's can you hit your doubles? Elliot Milk can. Takes a 2-0 lead here on Jeff. First to four. Man, I just cannot look at his throw and not see Phil Taylor. Like, he, he even does the face the exact same way. Like that is that is crazy. And there's a 180 from Elliot Milk to start off this leg. His second 180 of the match. Jim Widmeyer up three to one on Larry Butler in the other semifinal. Elliot only 55 to follow the 1080. That's typically my game. Looks like uh, Jeff throws like Phil Taylor, but has the Aspinall darts. What they look like. Yeah, they kind of have that front bulge there, don't they? Yep, and the grip in the back. Elliot really just playing well so far in this one. 85 average currently. Yeah, and I think Jeff throwing a touch off his typical uh, move there. I do know his semifinal is a 4-0 win, correct? Over yes. the Canadian? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, Jeff's tournament average is actually an 80.89. That's fourth overall out of all the players in this pro singles. So Jeff wow. Ball has been averaging way better than his current average. I w definitely would not have believed that if you would have told me without showing me those stats. Yeah, he has six, six 180s in the tournament. Coming in just in front of Jeff Springer and Leonard Gates. Yeah, and Jim I mean, Widmeyer. Playing very well. Elliott's three dart average for the tournament is a 76. He has six 180s as well, although he's added two it, to it uh, so far in this match. Just the scoring power of Elliott Milk is, seems to be overpowering right now. First line average of 91.21, uh, and he is making it count as he hits that double four to take a 3 0 lead on Jeff. Just one leg away from the finals. My goodness, what a display here from Milk.
Jeff Ball also has the most 100 plus turns in the tournament. He has 53. And I did want to say something. I probably saw the most relaxed throw of my life last week in Daniel Hawkins. But I have always been a fan of Elliot Milk's throw. It just seems like it's effortless. It's, it has a little bit of a Randy Van Dersen esque throw, where like Randy just looks like he just yeah. he just throwing for fun, and it's hitting triples every time. Yeah, <laughs> you're correct there. It really does, doesn't it? Yeah, it just looks like he just opens up his arm. Yep. He just extends his arm forward, and the darts just follow it. That uh, pinky up in the air. Very posh, that addition to the throw. Mm -hmm. I like it. Mac Feely does the same thing. You and Mac Feely. I like Mac. Mm. Love me some Mac Feely. <laughs> yeah, I just... It feels good to be a fan of his. Get it? See what I did there? Yeah, it does. It does. I uh, Big 140 for Elliot. I had the pleasure of playing Milk a couple times in the past, and it just seems like every time you sniff an opportunity at a couple legs, he just jumps in and takes it from you. Well, I can tell you this. Jeff has not sniffed a, an opportunity at a leg yet, I don't think. Elliot's been quite dominant. Yeah, and he's still holding on to his dominancy as he's looking to... He even played the smart move there yeah, and I tried to move say. to the 18 for a 174. He's really playing well. 82 after 12 on his own throw. Typically in any any level tournament, if you're holding your throw and going out in 15 darts or less, uh, you're typically going to win a lot of those. And look at this. He goes 25-17 for tops. Tops for the match and a 4-0 victory. And he let go of that one a little bit early. Knows that was a bad dart. Bob Euchre would say just a bit outside. Jeff a ton there, but not a lot of pressure on this 40 for Elliott. Double 10. And he does it on dart three, a 4-0 victory for Elliott Milk. Wow. What a display and an 87.13 average to boot. And he will go up against Jim Widmeyer in the final here as he defeated Larry Butler 4-1. So your final will be Elliot Milk. Tim, get off the stage. No, I'm sorry. Tim <laughs> Widmeyer <laughs> next here on USA Darts coverage of the Music City Classic. Hang on to your seats, folks. We'll be right back for this final. Don't go anywhere.
All right, guys, welcome back here to Nashville, Tennessee, live at the Sinesta Nashville Airport Hotel, a.k.a. the Igloo. We are here for the Music City Classic, the 33rd annual Music City Classic, for the finals of the Pro 501 Singles event. Elliot Milk wearing his salmon-colored <laughs> Under shirt. Armor shirt. <laughs> sponsored by Under Armour as their first sponsored dart player. 81 scored out of them. Jim Widmeyer, a.k.a. Captain America, wearing the pretty awesome uh, DPFL uh, Jules Van Doggen looking jersey, although... It is, isn't that the style of? Yeah, I think tools? it's. It, I think they a did the same deal, but modified it a little bit for um, Jim, as uh, Jim's a big supporter of DPFL as well because he's from that Florida area now. And well, he's not Dutch, so let's take that flag yeah. off there. <laughs> let's go ahead and take that out of there. That was the funniest uh, part about uh, uh, New York when I was talking to MVG. Eh, kind of Dutch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love that. Um, averages for this tournament, Jim's in third place overall, the top eight, uh, with an 80.35. Uh, Elliot's sitting on a 77.59, although Elliot's first nine average is a 92. Uh, his scoring power has been huge on that first nine, but he looks like he's struggled on his finishes. Average finish, the second lowest of any of the top eight players with a 41.92. So not finishing very high. He is leading the event in 180s, though, with eight of them. Those are all fun facts brought to you by Sean Green. <laughs> doop, 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 boop. At least you're bringing us something here, bud. <laughs> oh, no, I love it. Love it. Whatever. Elliot has slack first dart, but responds nicely to it. And then uh, does another slack dart for fun. 66 scored. Throws those hands up. He's not satisfied. Slacking a little bit from his last go round. Jim. 36 left. Oh, when he hits the wrong double. But a good look at it. We'll leave 28 if Elliot does not take out this 156. Elliot's going to be kicking himself because... It should be about 28 left, if my maths are correct. There we go. I'm adjust it there. Would you just look at it? Elliot would like to have had less than 156 left. Uh, for the slack first and third dart there. Hits a ton, but... Jim, a clear look here to break the throw in leg number one of the final. And he does in two darts. A 17-dart break of throw. Elliot's not going to be happy with with that start. No, you, you know he wants a little bit more out of himself on that one. That's one of those legs where if Jim beats him with a 12-darter or a 13-darter even, oh you can feel okay about it. Oh, my gosh. Forrest Gump's in the background. You see that? Oh my gosh, he ran all the way here? <laughs> I didn't know he ran through the mountains, too. Look at that. On that journey from Greensville, Alabama. Alabama native, Forrest Gump down back there. I don't even know how those guys are focusing with that in the, in the room. <laughs> I'd be going to ask them for an autograph immediately. Actually, I'll be right back. I was a running... <laughs> Now we're done. We're done. <laughs> we're not done. We oh, we nice, co nice collection there. One through three, six from Widmeyer. Shut your mouth about the darts. We need to talk about Force Gump more. <laughs> Just kidding, Ellie. <laughs> I think that second dart is in the trip. Oh, that's going to be unlucky. Yep, that did not leave a finish. So Jim. Has six from one, three, two. Aaron, we were just trying to entertain you. Still on here. 
But yes, eventually we do need to sleep. Maybe tomorrow. <laughs> Jesse goes, logged in. All I heard was I was running and logged back out. <laughs> That's classic. Whoa. There are some characters in this room right now. Santa's here. Saw him earlier. Tops for a 2-1 lead. Does not get it. Elliot Milk get a look at this 80 to break right back and get back on throw. And he's going to get two darts at double 10 to do so. Resets Ooh. and hits it. Gives a little side look. And breaks it right on back. We see Wid gives him the nod of approval darts. as he walks back. Look at the two legs in. And we're at 88 and 92 averages. Yeah, this is going to be a good final. Mm. Mm -hmm. I, I could completely agree. I think both these guys have just kind of played their way to this point. We saw like kind of some spark or two in the last match from Milk. Let's see what we get here. He gets 85. So staying in control of his leg on throw so far. But Jim's trying to take care of that. Big 180 for Jim Widmeyer. Captain America, boom goes the dynamite. His first of the match. And fourth of the tournament. And look at this. Finds it right in there again. Come on. Back to back Hell 180s. That as he gives a yes. There you go. You usually don't see any type of emotion out of Jim. That fired him right on up. He's had he had three for the entire tournament up to this point. Just hit two back to back. Trying to break right on back. He's gonna get a look at double eight. Oh, for a twelve dart leg. And he's gonna be back. For double eight, Elliot Milk, a lot of work to do to even put pressure on this. Smart last dart. Leaves 150. But Jim, three clear darts at this and needs only one of them. 13 dart break right back. This is entertainment, folks. Look at that average up to a 98.87 for Jim Widmeyer. And you can see the focus start to turn on here. Only 59. He's going to have to reel in the adrenaline a little bit. Elliot just never seems phased by anything, but he needs to stop dropping one of his three darts. He seems to be dropping low into that one yeah, pretty consistently. A little sporadicness in a couple darts here and there, you know? I mean, I'll take it if my last dart's going to be in the trip 20 every time, or last two darts. Making sure the score is correct. 44 scored. Elliot right back into the trip 20. Adjusted a little bit. Gets a steady ton out of it. These guys are throwing their best darts against the throw. And that's usually not the case. Not at all. No, it's usually with the throw that they're banging out some good, good <laughs> darts. Uh-huh. <laughs> you had me there for a minute. <laughs> 20 Sean <scores>. Green, everyone. <laughs> Sean Green. Oh, boy. I oh think boy. Aaron's right. Maybe we needed some Zs. Nonsense. Oh, jeez. Uh, let's bring over some of these blind draws after this. That'll get fun. Although, Danny Lobby and Kevin Luke drew each other as their blind draw partners. If they don't win that, I'm going to make fun of them later. Uh, touche. Touche on that <laughs> one. They, they really draw each other? Yes. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, they should win. Cheating. Even though Cheating. they're both left-handed and weird, they should, they should be victorious in yeah. that blind draw. 
I'll just say it. Lefties. Terrible. <laughs> oh, Jim. Jim, right-handed Jim. <laughs> Only gets a 41 there. Slack. Third dart does not leave a finish. 41, though, from Elliot reopens up the door a little bit. They have slowed down a little bit in this leg. Jim not on a finish after 15 darts. But a 140 will help that. Leaves 37. Who are you talking to? What you saying about me? What you saying about me? The burn man. What you saying about me? The burn man hit me up. Asking about Connor. Ah, uh, Bernie. 32 left for Jim Widmeyer. Take a 3-1 lead, and he gets it done. Makes that look simple. He is one leg away, Captain America, from taking down this title in the Open Pro Singles. Yeah, they're making these checkouts look pretty easy. Yes, they are. Look Can we this. speak to the talent level of Elliot Milk to be throwing soft tip yesterday in a real big tournament well, to turn back around and make the finals here today in this? And he, I believe, was top six. Well, that's the thing about it. It's like that. that that's what's so impressive to me about your Leonard Gates and your Elliot Milk and and so on and so forth is their ability to go from steel tip to soft tip and it's like it's nothing at all. Yeah. Uh, to me, it would take at least um, 200 darts to get the rhythm right, the feel right, because I throw a little bit harder in my soft tip to get it to the board and give it the right um, – angle that I'm looking for, you know? Yeah, actually, I was talking to Trish Grezik, who just played an ADA last week, yep. soft tip, and she actually throws a completely different flight uh, weight combination between her soft tip and steel. Same. And so she had to th she's been having to throw with her soft tip setup this weekend because she can't adjust to it her steel her steel tip. She throws a different flight that's bigger. So it feels sluggish. Yeah, it's very tough. And that's why I'm uh, like those uh, Kevin Lukes. They use the same flight mm -hmm. for the, the draw. I can't do that. I've got to use a double 18. Ooh. Double nine yeah. gets it done in 12 darts. I mean, you're, we're seeing like bits of just brilliant dart play out of these two guys. So, yeah, I use like a shape in steel and then I use a pair in soft. I got to do something different to get my angle because I have that Danny Lobby angle uh -huh. on steel. So you got to kind of pull that Just back in down. In front. Yep. Hey, I could do that, but <laughs> apparently that's an easy way to do it. Apparently from Daryl Gurney. Milk with a Steady. solid ton. Yep. Must win legs each one of these, obviously, but this one's more important than most because it's against the throw. So to start off with a steady ton there is huge. He's going to look to try and throw in a maximum in this leg. He's going to need at least one 140, if not more. Only gets 60, so early on, the this is a favorable leg here for Jim Widmeyer. Kyle says, don't be talking about lefties. Ah, <laughs> uh, just just a friendly some friendly jokes there. Yeah, my dad's left handed. I'm allowed to do that. <laughs> Ninety eight scored for Jim. Puts himself on a finish first. But Elliot can really pressure that one five six. He would like a one forty. Only gets a ton, gives himself a little spanking as he walks to the board. <laughs> Knows little, that that's probably not enough. A little side slap we all do. Yep. I believe I used the perfect terminology. Thank you. Yeah, you really <laughs> did. You really did. Even with the N on the end. Just tried to add a little extra value and half the time. Well, let's be honest. All the time, it doesn't work. <laughs> trip 19 <laughs> Big will trip. leave double 12, or trip 15 for double 18, whichever he wants. It will be double 12 to stay in this match. 
Oh, <laughs> that would have been massive. Jim Widmeyer would, needs to take out this 112 here, you would think, or else the advantage goes straight to Elliott Milk, and he will get a look back at the 24. Elliott Milk to tie this up three legs apiece, break the throw, and hold the throw for the final leg. Or no, they will re-cork. Yep, they'll re-cork. So it could be anybody's game here. And there it is. Let's go to a last leg decider here in the final of the Open Pro Singles Race to Four tournament. They will diddle here or shoot the cork to see who will go first in this last leg decider. Tim Way back there making up rules, making sure that they're aware that whatever he says goes. He's saying it's alternate. It's diddle. Yep. There's, I think they're trying to determine the order of who goes first in the diddle. It should be the reverse person who went first to start the match, um, although they could be doing that completely. I don't think that Elliot probably cares, so they'll probably figure this out pretty quickly. They already fist bumped. By the way, I made up that rule, so if that's what he's telling them that it is, just know that I made it up completely, and I'm not responsible for the fact that he went out there and told them that. Fun fact. Don't tell him I said it. What? Just confirming. Oh, okay. I think Elliot was like, I don't know. Yeah, I totally made up that rule. I actually don't know the, the rule at all. If it's cork, yeah, uh, it is who, cork. Oh, we've I know, it, I know it's it that. Previously. I know that is. Looks like that was close call, so they're gonna redo it. They are not playing PDC rules, so they are measuring. That's actually a really good blocker dart. Just kidding. Jim Widmeyer, of course, just sneaks it right on in because Captain America is superhero. Jim Widmeyer will go first. The last leg decider. 5 0 win. Open pro singles. Like I just fight yeah, through it. I was going to let Karen, you go there, whatsoever. bud. 33rd annual Music City Classic. Ooh, slides it in there on top of those two darts. As you said, he likes to stack. I was surprised he didn't move there myself. But then again, when you're, I'm not a stacker, I'm an I'm a underneath kind of guy. Elliot, I'm surprised he got that third dart in the trip mm -hmm. 20 because it looked like that first dart blocked the second one, and then I just thought it added another blocker there. Jim might move down now. Yep. Looking down at the 19s. Shout out to Tim Way uh, for scoring this match for us. Yeah. Always kind of one of those tasks that you're like, eh, hesitant to do. I hate doing it yeah, so much because you it just the math goes out your out of your head when you're up there. It, and you know it. You know the math. It's not like you don't know it. It's just like when you're up there and the pressure gets to you and you got Jim Widmeyer and Elliot Milk behind you throwing, yep. you're like, oh, I don't want to mess up. I, Trish Grazik actually did it perfectly, CDC in Canada. Um, Matt Campbell in the final goes single 20, trip 19, trip 18, and Trish goes, goes I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, it's a 131. <laughs> but Trish, the, probably the, uh, arguably the top female player uh, in North America. and, and She pulls that out of her bag. She's go, I have no idea. Uh -huh. <laughs> and sorry. <laughs> and the best part is that it's like, of course, live mic'd. So you hear, I have no idea. <laughs> Oh, Trish. Oh, <laughs> Trish. Oh, that was great. Great moment. Another one for the 57 there, huh? Yeah. On the 151. We saw that with Jason Brandon. Yeah. That, I still don't know how much I like that that shot. Well, it left 94. Yeah, as, that's why. why I think it's a weird one. Yeah. Like, different. It's a different, different way to go about it. But uh, I sit here for a reason. <laughs> And has everything to do with my dart game. Four to three victory for Jim Widmeyer. He is the champion of the Open Pro Singles. Well, there well it is. Well done. Elliot Milk threw fantastic all event long and had 
one of the toughest roads I think I've ever seen throughout an entire tournament. Not a single player that was not a named big player. But congratulations to Jim Widmeyer. Captain America takes down this pro singles event. Nicely done. Tim Way asking for a customary kiss on the cheek for chalking. <laughs> oh, man. There we go. Well, folks, <laughs> that's going to do it for us this evening. There's nothing but the blind draw left, so we're going to catch up on our Zs, and we'll be back tomorrow for some more action from the Music City Classic. What do you say, Sean? Man, what a great first day. I had a great time with you, as always. It's always great to, to be here. I want to say thank you so much for inviting me, as always. Um, eh, it could be better. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, you're, <laughs> you're right. You're so right there. Oh, no, no. But, Happy um, to have you along. No, it's, it's been great. It's been great to see these players, um, the buzz that built around today's ESPN uh, by Bullshooter, which, again, shout out to them, Arachnid, for, for doing that, uh, for taking that step and taking that chance. Kudos, 100% kudos, because, I mean, it was great to see the amount of people, 2,000 in the uh, Thursday um, event kind of going on, in yeah, their, on mean, their page. and then Consistently. Yeah, exactly. And Up then around 2.4, 2.5 at one point. Hopefully family members tune in and, and recorded, and hopefully we get those numbers up and have a good showing for maybe uh, more coverage on uh, ESPN. What do you say? I mean – that sounds great, especially if uh, if we get in on that action, you know. Um, but I do want to give a huge shout out to Gordon and DJ, who absolutely rocked it today oh, uh, yeah. with the ESPN commentator. The, I'm sure that they met probably 30 minutes before they had to do it. And Apparently they had dinner with them the night oh, before and, and kind of was Built telling the them how everything is, here's what you need to know, that kind of thing. And I thought it was a spectacular job from the whole crew, not only – um, it was ESPN great. And, and the commentators, but um, bull shooter staff too. So yep, the shaky camera aside. <laughs> yep, which hey. gives me anxiety as a streamer <laughs> severely. Gives us, gives us all anxiety. <laughs> um, but I mean, shout out to Alex Bellman for winning the title, Randy Fern for top two, and of course Kevin Luke and um, Joe Cheney for for making top four. There we go. All righty, folks. Well, thanks for watching. We will see you tomorrow for some more action from Nashville, Tennessee, and the Music City Classic. And shout out Jason Brandon winning the CDC match play today. There we go. Let's shout end on out that to note. him. Let's end on that note. Dynamite. Take care, guys.